You're watching Trading Day on BNN Bloomberg. I'm Amber Canmar. We're tracking shares of Lightspeed surging up around 15% after the company reported sales and adjusted profit that came in higher than expected. This comes at a time when the stock has been under significant pressure. There was the quick ouster of CEO JP Chauvet and the reinstatement of the founder, Dax De Silva, as interim CEO. Well, today it was announced that he would be staying in that position permanently with a laser focus. This is a new stage for Lightspeed, uh, profitable growth. You, you, we're, can't repeat it enough. It's, uh, it, it is a, a, a new phase for the company that, uh, that I'm excited to lead. Uh, and, uh, and I think we've, we have put our heads down and we made sure that we could deliver on that, balancing strong growth with profitability. You see that in our guide where we're, we're, we're projecting a minimum of 20% growth, but also a minimum of $40 million in EBITDA uh, and happy to now become per, uh, the permanent CEO to, to guide us uh, through fiscal 25 and beyond. Well, even with the pop that we're seeing in the stock, our next guest sees more than 40% upside. Let's bring in Andrew Hart, who's fintech analyst with BTIG. This is a story um, that has really evolved over the last year, right? There was that one disastrous quarter and then a real, you know, finding religion just in a short couple of days, bringing back the CEO. This mantra by Dax Da Silva, profitable growth, profitable growth. Is it finally sticking with investors? I think so, yeah, and, and and definitely this was the first opportunity for Dax to come on and, and iterate, reiterate that message several times, as you just saw, and, and it showed up, right? Um, fiscal year 25, uh, EBITDA guidance came in at more than 40 million, and the street was looking for less than 20, right? So it beat uh, bottom line expectations by 20% on guidance, and it sounds like there's going to be areas to continue focusing on improving efficiencies um, across the organization, not just from a headcount perspective, but... Um, when you think about bigger picture, this company has brought together nine acquisitions after the past several years. So, you know, I think Dax really iterated that on the cost side, there's lots of synergies to go as well. Well, how much confidence do you place in the ability to get it done? Because you're right, that's a huge beat in a forecast compared to what analysts like yourself had thought. Does this open up the company to execution risk and, and thus, you know, a big drop in the stock? You know, I, I don't necessarily think so, right? They're guiding to this coming quarter of about uh, 7 million of adjusted EBITDA. So if you run that out, it doesn't take that much more growth. And, and remember, they're still guiding to 20% top line growth. So when you pair this top line expansion with the payments mandate going from uh, about 32% payments penetration in the most recent year to north of 40% next year, right? You're, you're having really strong top line growth paired with this margin expansion that you're going to see because when they put in the hard cost cut uh, cost cuts to uh, reduce OPEX, that has to start flowing through eventually. And we haven't even seen that in the most recent numbers. It's what's going to start coming forward. So between the strong top line and the efficient bottom line uh, from a cost perspective, I, I don't think that 40 million is going to be hard for them to hit at all this year. And they were very clear saying at least 40 million. So, um, you know, I would expect that it ends up being slightly above that by the end of the year. Lightspeed as a point of sale network does a lot of business with restaurants. You know, we're seeing a lot of restaurants openly call out weakness when it comes to uh, the consumer shares and a bunch of them are starting to roll over. Can we extrapolate that to maybe softness coming for Lightspeed or is it sort of a, a mega trend um, that Lightspeed is, is kind of rolling out with their tech, with their platform that, that applies to restaurants in good times and bad times? I think, I think there's a couple of things to consider. The first of which is, and it will kind of have the same consumer headwinds, is Lightspeed's about two-thirds restaurant and a third, or um, I'm sorry, two-thirds re retail and a third restaurant. Um, so it's not totally restaurants. And then the other really important thing to remember here is they're traditionally a software business. And right now, just over 30% of their customers are on our payments customers, which is where you'll see more of that volatility from a macro perspective. So they have this nice benefit of also having this SaaS revenue model that can insulate them a bit from consumer spending trends that will go up and down. Now, over time, as payments becomes a bigger part of the mix, that will matter. Um, but I don't think it's they're as exposed to consumer spending trends right now because they have that really nice um, software revenue stream. You see some upside from here, the Canadian price target around $28 and change. Um, the Canadian price is trading at $20 per share. What gets you there? You know, it doesn't take much. They're trading at um, you know, less than three times gross profit, 
Um, after the shares have traded up today, they're trading at 20 times 2026 gross profit. That's a big discount to peers. And when we do our price target analysis, we look at it from the time they initiated the payments mandate, which was a year ago today, effectively. And we run a four-year bull bear base case, and we take into different considerations of how much payments uptake they can get, how fast they can gross SR poop, and put a really conservative EBITDA multiple on it in 2026. So. I think really what it needs to take is the company to show they can continue executing getting the payments mandate penetration and show that they can drive drive this SAS ARPU higher that they talked about today. But it's a big discount to peers right now. So mm. I think it just needs to instill more confidence in the ability to execute for several quarters and several years. And I'm sure they'll be talking a lot about that during the capital markets day coming up. You also cover uh, their rival Toast, but with a neutral rating. Is that just on valuation that Toast has run up and done so well? Or, uh, you know, do you think that Lightspeed has the better product? Yeah, I mean, Toast is adding adding restaurant locations at an incredible pace, and we expect them to continue to do so. I think the difference there is they've captured more of this SaaS pricing that Lightspeed hasn't been able to capture yet. And so from a valuation perspective, it's two different worlds, right? Toast is kind of leading the peer side and, and Lightspeed um, to consider them peers and the restaurant side of things is, is a big discount. So um, I, it's, a, it's a very different story right now between Toast and Lightspeed. And Lightspeed has the benefit of being a much lower multiple um, and different pricing levers that they're also gonna be able to start pulling here as they turn their focus from payments only last year to, to a more balanced approach this coming year of software and payments. Andrew, thanks so much.